Hey y'all, welcome back to part two of this production video. We're gonna go over the install, how I came to my bid, and what that actual bid was, as well as some of the side projects we had going on at the same time that turned this shop into a madhouse. I know it sounds like last night was the Plasma Torch's birthday, but really I was at a conference in Atlanta screaming my mind off. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. So I'm going to let voiceover Richard do most of this from the office. Let's go. So where we last left off, Tommy was finishing up welding out all of the final assemblies. Off camera, I built the end caps, which are basically just the edge or legs of these pieces without the stretchers on them. Those end caps are made so that these can be configured a bunch of different ways, uh, set up in whatever length you want. We provided the customer with 10 of them. Probably not going to need them all, but better to make them when we have a jig set up. Then it was all hands on deck. We have the intern, who by the way is paid. I get questions about that. He works on his own projects sometimes and those are his. He's not paid for. He does a lot of art projects for school. When he's working on stuff for the shop, he's paid just like any other employee. He's working welding and grinding. I'm welding and grinding. Tommy's welding and grinding. We're filling in the tops of the shelves, all those welded connections, as well as picking up anything we missed along the way. When the assembly was on the jig, it was face down, so these parts weren't accessible. It's easy to do here real quick. And we have the whole smorgasbord of welders set up. We're using three different HTP machines just to rock through them as fast as we can. To get the 30 of these done, it took maybe an hour and a half. Not much. Pretty easy to do. After they're all set up, we drag them over to the trailer. And thankfully, because of the little flanges, these all kind of interlocked together and stacked on the trailer real easy. Well, there you go. Uh, six days after we started this project. Not working on it all the time though. It's done. The Jeep is pretty well loaded. It's a lot. Wow. We are gonna go install them right now. I'll see you there. So we brought in all these pieces. Our end caps here have the same plate as everything else. It's a little overkill for the end cap, but good enough. You bolt together these are 5 16 with a lock nut. Now, shear strength on that is over two tons, so these are supposed to hold couches. I'm not worried about it. So I hope you guys can see how these L shapes now bolt together. Those matching plates on either end of each shelf piece and then also the end caps just interlock. Four bolts was way more than we needed, but my thought was if we miss one or one doesn't line up, we'll be good. What we ended up doing was just using a step bit to open up any holes that didn't line up perfectly. Every one of the connections got four bolts. These things are never coming back apart. Now what we've done is while Tommy's over there putting everything into place and screwing them down, I'm here with the jigsaw putting these little notches so that they'll fit around the flanges. Take two of them shiny side up, even one handed, you got to slide. I know a bunch of y'all are here to hear about how we bid this project and I'm not going to beat around the bush with it. The bid was $7,500. But stick around, watch the rest of the video. We got some fun projects including this shenanigans that went on. The way that bid breaks down is 30 shelving units, $250 a piece. That allows the customer to increase their quantity if they want to without me having to redo numbers for them. It's also a number that I was plenty happy with. Over on Patreon, we're going to do a bid breakdown where we go through the materials, labor, hardware, install costs, all of it, how I came to my number, what I feel about it now, and, you know, honestly, why I'm happy with it. But full disclosure, that isn't actually the real bid. This project was for a charity that my family supported for a while that supports people coming out of homelessness and helps them furnish their new homes. I gave them a pretty stout discount on the project. I was happy to do so and I think it was the right thing as well as we get to take that discount as a tax write-off. So there's a little bit of benefit there. Softens the blow but it's still a good thing to do so I'm okay with it. Well, that was a heck of a project. I'm happy with how it all turned out. The way I approach a bid like this when we're in a production mode 
is pretty similar to our one-off jobs, except I'm a little more forgiving on the buffer I like to add to a bid. The way I do a bid is how much time do I think it's going to take times our hourly shop rate of $100 an hour. Hit the card here if you want to see how we come up with that number. Plus the materials. I don't even mark them up. Then we build in a little bit of a buffer, and that's there just to take care of any mistakes I made if something takes longer than I thought it was going to. And in our one-off signage projects, that comes up fairly often. You know, something that we didn't foresee being an issue becomes one. In these production jobs, for the most part, it doesn't, but you really need to be on top of that. And if you're approaching something that you haven't before, it's very important to pay attention to it because the mistake or the little thing can really blow out of proportion on something like that and you need to build it into your bid you're gonna win on a bunch of them if you're doing it right every once in a while you lose but hopefully you don't lose too bad the project we've got going on right now are table bases for a local restaurant that's opening up we played with the design a couple times and I teased it on Instagram then Tommy got set into building these bases. I showed him what we needed to do. I went to this conference for a couple days. Tommy stayed at the shop and worked on these. The base itself or the vertical part of it is only eight inches at the bottom, seven at the top to give us a nice little taper. And Tommy built some bases to go at the bottom of them that will you know, make the table not tip over. And when I got back, we started to lay into the second stage of that project, which are some different size bases. So last night I'm trying to edit this video and I realized I don't have a whole lot of footage of building these table bases, just a little bit of Tommy doing it and none of making those squares. So I'll show you how they got put together. They're basically just tacked right now once we have everything assembled and they're actually nice and square. We'll make those tacks a little bit bigger. But it doesn't take much more than that to hold the square frame together, especially when it's only under, you know, straight up and down load. And unfortunately, that project's just kind of at a standstill right now. We're waiting on a little bit more information from the customer on some changes they wanted to make. Until we get that, we can't go forward, so it's all right. I don't mind having it slow down just a little bit. It's been a crazy couple weeks around here. So that sort of mistake there is the sort of thing that your safety factor, your fudge factor accounts for when you're bidding. You know, a customer needs to change something mid-project. Maybe it doesn't materially affect the project, but it's going to mess with your schedule. In this case, we've got other things to do. Tommy's working on making some of these F-bombs. I was working on a new Weld It Yourself kit that's coming out maybe next video. So you know what just became a tax write-off? <sighs> it's been a crazy couple weeks in the shop, but I kind of like it that way, to be honest. The next project we moved on to involved trying out a new machine that HTP sent out for me to demonstrate to y'all. We've had their $400 machine and their $2,400 machine in the shop, but never something right in the middle. So they sent out the MIG 200i so we could test it out. It's a pretty comparable machine to some of their others as far as duty cycle, but without some of the advanced features. We're gonna load the thing up with O3O wire and then use it for the entirety of this next project just so we could kind of give it a run for its money, put it through its paces. You don't have the screen with some of the intuitive stuff and no pulse functionality, but the price bracket it falls into is perfect. Here in the shop, we've got HTP's you know, $450 MIG 130 all the way up to like the Pro Pulse 220, which is running you low 2000s. This guy's going to fall right in the middle in the $1,200, $1,300 range, which is why I was happy to get it in the shop and be able to show it off kind of the whole cross section of what they have to offer. Over here, we're going to select the wire. It's already on O3O. That's what we're using, so we're good. We've got the polarity set right for gas MIG inside. So we'll just go forward and set our material. We're going to be welding on this is 3 16 wall. So we're gonna dial this guy two three sixteenths on the yellow band here. His yellow is the settings for O3L wire. And then we're gonna play with our voltage or heat to decide where we wanna be. I would suggest starting somewhere in the like 23-ish range and then working off of there based on what kind of weld you're getting out of it and the operator's comfort. So this was a cool opportunity for me. My friend Mary here, who I met at one of the maker meetups, has 
had a good amount of book learning in welding, but not a lot of actual hands-on in the shop experience. So she's familiar with the terms, the technical stuff that goes into it, has the knowledge or the familiarity to be able to diagnose a problem, but we get to watch her evolve in this project and you'll see she does. We start off by just laying up a jig so that we can build the first one of these feet that are eventually gonna be part of a big bench assembly. Yeah, so it's still a little bit hot, a little bit concave. So we're gonna come down off the voltage. Let's call it another 10%. Try again. Yep. Anyway, with practice, once you get comfortable where you, you can just run the torch one-handed, Yes. you can take your other hand on the knob and actually... Oh shit, yeah. that's some advanced level technique. Or if you call HTP and you have the Pro Pulse 200, 300, 220, they'll sell you a slider that goes right there on your torture gun and you can adjust it with your thumb while you work. Very God nice, Peter Zeal has got a video about it, card here. So the work just continued. While Mary was working on this project in the background, Tommy and I were actually finishing up the shelving job. You can see them all sitting there in the background of a bunch of these shots. It was kind of a hodgepodge with when Mary was available to come in the shop, but I've tried to splice this all together in a way that's somewhat cohesive and makes sense. The project she was doing is building some frames that are going to be supporting a wood facade for some large benches. This is her project, not my shop's project, but I'm always excited to participate in somebody else kind of trying to one-up their game, get better at something, and I've got the stuff in the shop to do it. And it was a great way to show off the 200i as well. We'd had it sitting around for a little while trying to find the right project to do with it, and one just presented itself here. As Mary worked through the job, you can actually see her welds getting better, getting cleaner. There's less stops and starts as she's getting comfortable with the machine and especially the hand movements required to change the way you're welding as you encounter larger or smaller gaps in a joint if all your cuts weren't perfect. And, you know, hands off to her. Here at the end of the video, you actually see that she's figured out the settings she likes for inside corners, outside corners, and the butt welds on those mitered 45s and is stopping to change the machine, really just changing the heat setting, upping it a little bit for the inside corners, cooling it off a little bit for the outside corners, and somewhere in the middle for those butt welds. Just knocked right on through it. All right, Mary, on the spot, what do you think of the 200i? I really like that as somebody stepping outside of my trade, accustomed to making sawdust, this was a machine that delivered, had a performance to me that felt like a Cadillac, but was also user friendly, had an uh, interface that I could wrap my head around, and I delivered a project. I got paid. Everything felt good and approachable. I gotta say, it's a thumbs up. She's kissing ass real hard, HTP. And for a review more like how we normally run them around here, let's jump over to Tommy, who's also been using the machine for quite a bit of the welding on his projects. How are you liking the welder? Yeah. Doing just what I needed to do, weld. They're attached. <laughs> Mary then jumped over to the Pro Pulse 220 MTS to build out the main part of the benches because it's the one that was over by the welding table, to be honest. And I didn't catch any footage of that because that was while Tommy and I were doing the install of the shelves. But Mary was kind enough to send us a picture she grabbed at the time. And then we decided to jump over and test out the benches. It's uh, quality control. Right it here? is quality control. quality control. We do have some heavy people here in Oklahoma. I do say you did well goodly, Mary. Bye, God. So yeah, 
work 80 hours a week for three weeks straight? Uh, this sounds like a good idea to you, too. We did take safety precautions. Next project on the docket was actually the start of a project that I'll have out on a video here in a couple weeks, uh, building a shelving project with a friend of mine, Derek, who came down from Kansas to visit, and then we went off to that conference together. I'm not gonna go very far into that project in this video. We'll save it for the project video, as well as it's a surprise for somebody, so I don't wanna give it away. Now, all of the woodwork, sawing, planing, all of it, you know, we get shavings, dust everywhere, and that reminded me of something. Now, based on all the comments that I heard in the last video, I do have to tell y'all, I know all the junk under the plasma table is gonna make 80 you think that I'm gonna burn the whole building down. I've been here seven years. We've never lit it on fire yet. There's three fire extinguishers within 10 feet of the table. I'm not worried about it, but just in case we've decided to add an extra precaution, we've got our brand new certified bucket of commenters tears. Don't worry, we're gonna keep it here just in case. Alrighty y'all, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate your time. Hope you got something out of this. As we go, I wanna thank all the folks here on the screen for their support over on Patreon. You wanna join them and get some more information. We're gonna do a full bid breakdown on this project, the real numbers, materials, labor, all of it that went into this, uh, why I think my bid is fair. And until next time guys, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Check this video out next for another project you might be able to make some money on in your entry level welding shop.